Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to the greatest business podcast in the universe. Yes, indeed. This is the award-winning top 10 behind the baller podcast coming to you live and direct from Ventura County, California. Of course, I'm recording professionally from the RV. I haven't named this RV yet, but I will soon. I am your host, Ben Baller, a.k.a. the Korean John Cusack, a.k.a. the Korean Earl Woods. I do not condone bitch-ass behavior, neither do the staff of Behind the Baller. We do not support men with female traits, and BTB does not ever side with those who throw rocks and then hide their hands, a.k.a. private pages on social media. Yo, what's good, y'all? Happy President's Day and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does this day mean to me? Not a goddamn thing, okay? Fuck George Washington. Fuck Abe Lincoln. Fuck all them fucking old... Man, fuck them slave fucking traitors, okay? We are writing our own history here now today, okay? Fuck all that bullshit that this country was built on. It's all bullshit, okay? It's got to get worse before it can get better, which means we are on our way, hopefully, for a better world, for our kids, for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the weekend wrap-up. On today's episode, I will be discussing the Hotel Cecil documentary on Elisa Lam. It's on Netflix. The Lakers are playing just good enough basketball. I pray AD's injury is not that bad. Is Russell Wilson leaving Seattle? Project 70 launches this week. It is really that time for me to start my golf career and a lot more. Mr. Miles... Mr. Jordan, a.k.a. the Dust Brothers. Let's get this motherfucking podcast started. By the way, today's episode is dedicated to one of my youngins, Bam, from Cocky Riders. He passed away two nights ago off the 105 freeway um, on his motorcycle. Some dumbass driver wasn't paying attention and rear-ended him. I was just with Bam two weeks ago. I talked about it on the podcast. I'm telling you guys, life is so precious. It's beyond gold. All right? Goddamn. Uh, rest in peace, Bam. He was a young soldier, man. I don't know if they're ever going to let me get into heaven, but I know you're going there, so please tell everyone I said Hi. Uh, Bam was our sergeant of arms for cocky riders. Again, my condolences for Bam. This episode is dedicated to you, boss. Now, for those of you who don't know who Earl Woods is, please use whichever hand, if you're left-handed or right-handed, right, extend that arm out and that hand out, okay? Use the other hand to place some baby powder into that hand and then slap yourself across your face. Hard. Jesus Christ. So yes, currently I am with my family in Ventura County near Lompoc. We're out trying to live our best life. You know, we're headed back today though. Uh, it's obviously the long day week. It's a long weekend, three day weekend, whatever, you know, the President's Day weekend, whatever the fuck that means again. Uh, my oldest son, London, is having some rough times in life at this very moment and I cannot figure it out. He is so loved by... Obviously me, his sister, his brother, his mom, beyond belief, his grandma, both grandmas, his grandfather, um, his uncles. You know, he's just very loved, gets a lot of attention. And uh, 
he has all that he needs. I, I think that there needs to be maybe a little bit more dedication time from me, even though I do what I can. But um, Zoom class ain't it for him. You know, his depression and anxiety and overall mental health has fallen and deteriorated tremendously. And I thought it was something else. You know, I don't know just what, why he was, you know, having uh, these uh, tantrums and stuff. And, uh, you know, I thought maybe, you know, it could be genetic, you know, have a bad temper and stuff. But we've set up play dates from, um, they've worked. They've helped a lot, him seeing his friends since, you know, we did this last, uh, since uh, before we left and shit. And um, we're going to do one later today. But being out of the house also helps a lot, him being in the RV. So that's why we leave. And it also helps my wife with with uh, things that I'm not going to get into. But um, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's Roblox. I don't know if it's YouTube. I don't know what the fuck he is watching, but I'm monitoring it big time now. Uh, there's a lot of crazy things he's been saying. And in the last few months, there's been attempted suicides, not from London, but I'm saying attempted suicides and toxic suicide amongst these kids that are in the ages, uh, between the ages seven and like 12 years old. It's like fucking crazy. Some kid killed himself. He's 12 years old last week. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Never in a trillion years did I ever think that London would ever utter the words, I hate my life. You know, I just don't, I don't like it here and whatever. And I just, I'm just like, well, what does that really mean? You know, and um, his frustration is past his maximum capacity, you know, of where his mental can just even, he, he can't take it anymore. And um, it shot way past the apex, the ceiling, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as I've said this before, kids are supposed to be out playing. He's supposed to be with his friends, conversing, just being a kid, having fun. It's, it's just really a tough time for them, no matter how smart London is and how much he understands that coronavirus exists and why we're inside. And he knows that coronavirus could possibly kill him due to his respiratory illness, right? And this virus directly attacks someone like him. He still doesn't truly understand. He doesn't get why he can't see his friends, you know, whatever. And, you know, just play and just be a kid with his friends though. That He's got a brother and sister and thank God he has that because if he was his only child, it'd be 10 times worse, but it's fucked up. I'm hearing from other parents, about seven of them have reached out to me about this uh, mental health with their kids, same age group, and they're having similar issues with even more extreme situations of their kids actually wanting to commit suicide. I'm actually mentioning that I don't want to live and all that, and I, I just can't understand it, you know? You know, when my dad was beating the shit out of me at London's age, like beating the dog shit out of me, and I thought that my life was terrible. You know, it was just fucking just all the shit that was going on. I still saw the light down that dark tunnel, you know. And I just knew better days would come. I just, I dreamed a lot, you know. I just was, I was a dreamer. I was a fucking man. I was, my nickname should have been Dreamer. I dreamed like a mother. I daydream, nightdream, you name it. And no matter what, being alive is better than anything in the world, no matter how much you're suffering. And somebody's like, how do you fucking know? Shut the fuck up. I'm talking to you too. Mental toughness, man. It's a lot of motherfuckers out here that are bitches, pussies. Oh, that's wrong. And those people, I don't give a fuck. I truly do not. This goes for my son. This goes for anybody suffering. You are better than that. You are stronger than that at 6, 7, 8, 15, 39, 70 years old. You are better than that. Okay? Life is so short and so precious. I'd rather be here than dead. There's nothing better than being alive. All right? Once you realize how truly precious and how short life is, it should put more perspective. But again, my son is eight and a half years old. He can't comprehend Okay, so the next step is to definitely seek professional help, which we're going to probably do. But what I'm getting at is you've let this world of people that, and I'm not saying that, you know, people don't have mental situations and they can't cope and things like that. And I get it. But what I'm saying is at a certain point, there's too much weakness that can be turned around. 
It just need the right motivation. I mean, the right the push. But a lot of people, they rather just give them be like, no, it's okay. Yeah, cry, do this. Take as much time as you need. If you need 75 years until you're normal again, cool. No, 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 no. We get help. We address this shit now. And if that's, I don't even know what the fucking, if it's tone deaf, if it's whatever the fuck you guys want to say, look, man, I don't want anybody to ever tell me how the fuck to raise my kids, right? There was nobody that could ever say that we're not doing a great job as parents. This is something that is completely beyond, you know, our control, really. That doesn't mean that I can't address it and that I can't obviously send as much motivation and positive love. I'm just saying like, yo, man, you just have to instill toughness into your children. They could still have a heart, you know, they could still be compassionate and you could still be compassionate. You know, it's just, you have to, man, we have to breed stronger children because as they get weaker and weaker and weaker, it just creates more problems, okay? My heart truly does go out to all the parents during this time who have kids that are going through a situation like this, okay? Now, continuing on with mental health, um, have any of you guys watched this new documentary on the Hotel Cecil on Netflix? All right, well, warning, all right, there are spoilers in this little segment here, but it's a documentary, so you know you can listen without bias. You know what I'm saying? It's it's been a story that's been around forever, and um, I personally have interest in this documentary because my mom's factory was on Los Angeles and Seventh Street from the late '70s until the early '90s. Okay, and this hotel is located exactly one block away from my mom's factory on Main and 7th Street. I used to walk up this fucking street every single goddamn day. I've walked past that hotel a thousand times or more, right? I've ran errands for my mom around the area. There was a fucking burrito stand right in the corner. It's fucking fire. Food was so goddamn good, right? I was already hip to all the fuck shit, all that scumbaggery that was going on there. And yes, I knew in real time that Rich Ramirez a.k.a. the Night Stalker, was living there, right? Like he was staying there for a little bit and whatever. And now this documentary has come out. And really, it's not just about the, the Hotel Cecil. It's on a Chinese girl from Canada who went missing named Elisa Lam. Now, Elisa Lam is a Chinese girl from a family in Vancouver, and she decided she, was, she has a really big on Tumblr, and she had mental health issues. She is clinically diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And she decided like, hey, you know what? I need to get the fuck out of Canada. You know, this is bullshit. I need to just get out and explore. And she decided to take her little journey to the West Coast. Um, well, to the California coast. She went to San Diego. And then she went to LA and she was going to make it her way up to the Bay Area, I guess, then go back home. And during her time in Los Angeles, she got off her meds. Now, she went missing and no one knew where she went. And, you know, there was sketchy ass elevator footage on the camera and there's conspiracy theories left and right about this and you know there was someone abducted her and this all this crazy shit then there was bad information and people you know even in the police department they thought that there was there was corruption going on and someone inside the hotel probably had something to do with it and there was time missing off the cameras and all kinds of crazy shit there was fucking internet sleuths who are absolute dumb fucks and it's just the total typical internet shit and like you know, like, oh man, you know, we know the guy who killed her and blah, blah, blah. Motherfucker, you ain't got no, you, you're not a professional. You're not a fucking detective. Motherfucker, you, 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 like, you're not even Kojak. The fuck is going, you ain't even, you ain't even motherfucking Mariska Hardigay. You ain't even Law & Order SVU. Shut the fuck up, all right? You're on YouTube with zero motherfucking professional background. Anyways... This uh, documentary is four episodes long. It's like 40 to 50 something minutes. This documentary could have been two episodes max. This shit could have been, you know, wrapped up kind of quick. They dragged it on a little bit here and there, right? And the most fascinating part of the documentary to me was when they broke down the history of the hotel from like the 1900s, it was 1907, 1911, 1917. I don't know what the fuck it was, but they talked about the booming times of downtown LA and then they talked about the Great Depression and how the fucking shit went into like major, you know, depression beyond recession. It's like worse than what we're going through right now. And it was just, it was fucked up. 
and that was an interesting part because they're just showing like LA and stuff and everything and all the crazy shit that was going on, the people they interview that have lived there for a long time, whatever, and then trying to change the name of the marketing because that hotel's always had a shitty ass fucking reputation. Just the fact how she died, I'll let that, you guys watch that shit. But look, I personally think after watching everything, getting the information I know, I think she killed herself. By accident, she was off her meds, you know what I'm saying? And she was just fucking, you know, I, you know, it was fucked up. It's dark sometimes, you know, the beginning starts to get good, but then it just kind of drags on. But, yo, it is worth a watch, okay? It's not Don't Fuck With Cats. It's nowhere, Don't Fuck With Cats has got to be top two or top three greatest fucking mystery documentary. That shit was fucking incredible, all right? It's not even the Night Stalker documentary, but it's good. I had to work time, right? Like I said, it could have been two 80-minute episodes and they stretched that shit out for no reason, which is dumb for budget-wise because, you know, I'm so obviously, I'm in fucking, I had a film degree, right? And so I know how it is to make a movie and whatever and dog. I don't give a fuck how easier it is. And this shit was like nothing crazy, but just watch it if you get a chance. Um, it's time for a commercial break. Mr. Davis, Miles, that is. Please give me a little LL beat and we'll be right back. Men across America love Tommy John underwear because they keep everything in place. No more flopping or sticking to yourself. And women love that they make them look so good. In 2021, you can make everyone happy with Tommy John. When you start every morning in Tommy John underwear, you're that much more comfortable. So that means you could do everything better. Trade out whatever cheap underwear was sliding down and riding up last year for Tommy John to finally get the comfort you deserve. With dozens of comfort innovations, once you've tried Tommy John underwear, you're never going back. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. What kind of innovations? Try breathable, lightweight, moisture wicking fabric with four times the stretch of the competing brands, so it moves with you. Tommy John underwear comes with a non-rolling waistband for the perfect fit. The legs never ride up, and each of Tommy John's 13 million pairs of underwear sold are covered by a no wedgie guarantee. I rock Tommy John, and you should too. Plus, there's no risk with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. Try Tommy John today and if you don't love them, they're free. Go to TommyJohn.com slash baller and save 15% on your first order. Go right now. Save 15% right now at TommyJohn.com slash baller. That's TommyJohn.com slash baller to save 15% on your first order. See site for details. All right, guys, we're back. And uh, Project 70 is dropping this Wednesday, the 17th. Okay. Wednesday morning, the 17th. And again, I am leading the project with card number one. Obviously, my first card is a Dodger player, and he is a current player. That's the lovely thing about this, is that there's current players. It's not like Project 2020, where Mike Trout was the only person that was current. It is anyone the fuck we want to choose, as long as we use one of the 70 years of top templates and stuff. And as the thing goes on, I'm kind of like, you know, I feel like I'm going to, you know, see what you guys think about this first card, and then kind of, you know, some cards would be crazy, some cards would be, none of my shit is all matchy-matchy. My shit is all over the motherfucking place. The only consistency I have is that I get paid and that I do the motherfucking right thing. Okay, other than that, creative wise, I I do I'm all over the place. All right. Now, in regards to Project 70, here is the full list of artists who are a part of this project. All right. We did get all the artists back from Project 2020. So all 20 guys from that are back. But now we have some major celebrities. And some new crazy big artists involved. So, yo, the list is for Project 70 is Action Bronson, Alex Pardee, Andrew Thiel, me, aka the Korean John Cusack, uh, Blake Jameson, Blue the Great, Brittany Palmer, Brittany Palmer, the fuck? 
It's a UFC model. Um, CES, which I don't know, CES, like the Consumer Electronics Show. Okay. Uh, Chinatown Market, Chuck Styles, Claw Money, Distorted, DJ Ski, Don C, F. Dot, Ermsey, Fuchi, Futura, the motherfucking God, uh, Greg, Crayola Simpkins, Gregory Siff, The Hundreds, Infinite Archives, Jacob Rochester, Jeff Staple, JK5, Jonas Never, Keith Shore, King Saladin, Lauren Taylor, Matt McCormick, Matt Taylor, Mikhail Brandup, Mims Brand, Mr. Cartoon, Morning Breath, Natural, New York, Nico, Old Man Alan, Pose, Quicks with 2C, Reality to Idea, Risk, Ron English, Sean Witherspoon, The Shoe Surgeon, Snoop motherfucking Doggy Dog, yes, Calvin Brodus, Snoop Dogg is in Project 70, Soulfly, shout out to my boy Chino from motherfucking Miami, Sophia Chang, Toy Tokyo, Tyson Beck, and Undefeated, yes, the sneaker store. So that is the list of all the people we got involved in Project 70. This is going to be a fucking crazy project. No shit. All right, guys. So this week, I am going to finally hit Monterey Park. Monterey Park has a fly-ass nine-hole course out there. I like that course they used to have. They have a nice little snack shop. I'm sure it's fucking gone. I haven't been there in fucking over 10 years, right? They got a nice little range. I'm going to use the range. I got some fucking hybrids. I got my putters. I got my motherfucking, uh, my woods, my irons. I'm going to go out there and just hit a thousand balls, right? And I'm maybe going to attempt to play nine holes. Again, remember, it's been over 13, no, about 13 years of an absence since I've played on uh, an 18 hole, right? Wilson, Griffiths Park. But uh, yeah, Monterey Park, going to do it. All right, guys, wish me luck. Fuck, man, I actually know a lot of pros, man. I just really need to get my fucking shit together. But actually, you know what? Fuck that. Pray for me. Not wish me luck. Pray for me. I can't imagine what my back is going to do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be in the golf cart, motherfucker. I ain't walking around. Goddamn fucking. I ain't got no caddy. You know what I'm saying? So real quick, let, let's talk about this Russell Wilson situation. I was on Clubhouse the other night. By the way, shout out to the 80, 90 people. It was a real late, late night chat. We went on three hours and we just talked about random sports and it went everywhere. And, uh, I don't, you know, I, I kind of wish I could record it. It had been a three-hour fucking podcast, right? Talked about Russell Wilson. My boy Josh D was on there. And look, man, he ain't fucking leaving Seattle, all right? Because, you know, this motherfucker wants to be the mayor one day, you know, and he you know, owns part of the Sounders. He's got ownership in Seattle. He's planted and established himself in Seattle, okay? It's just, you know, I don't want to hear these fucking rumors about Raiders in Vegas. Shut the fuck up, okay? Russell Wilson in Vegas, really? You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. You think CR? Like, that shit ain't, come on. Look, if he does leave Seattle, his legacy, his little nice guy, squeaky clean, like, person, this whole image, that shit changes big time. He don't want to be hated. You know what I mean? And I get that he's been sacked 500 times or, or close to that, but bro, yes, this is time for you to talk out loud. Be different. Like, yo, make that shit stone. Fuck that. Talk that shit. Stop being so motherfucking humble sometimes and talk your shit. Make the front office protect you, bro. Okay? We need to invest in an O-line, an A-1 offensive line. Okay? And stop doing fucking dumb ass shit. Like giving Greg washed up Olsen an eight-figure salary when this motherfucker was trash. For I wasn't a fucking fan of his when he was fucking under, uh, what's fuck Dick's name? Um... Cam Newton, all right? We already had two awesome tight ends in Hollister and fucking Disley. I know Hollister's a free agent. We fucking re-signed Hollister. Fuck, I mean, what's the dude from Philly we're trying to sign? Fuck him too. What the fuck, all right? Russ, I'm glad you got rid of your podcast. Or so I heard you have. Look, bro, you had no motherfucking business doing a goddamn podcast, especially during the fucking NFL season, bro, all right? This is do or die season coming up. We need to win the NFC West again. We need to show these motherfucking cocksucker Niner fans, these Rams fans, the fucking Arizona Cardinals. We need to go undefeated in conference, all right? And then we need to get to the Super Bowl, period, okay? I have a feeling that we might have to get rid of somebody big to get some of these other weapons that we need, so I'm scared, 
right? Like, I mean, who the fuck do we, I mean, like, like what, we get rid of fucking Tyler? No way we get rid of DK, you know, but and the fucking thing is Tyler's just as fucking valuable to me. He's just a smaller dude. I don't know. It's a fucked up situation. I want to think about it, but I wanted to address it. I wanted to talk about it. By the way, Clubhouse is a really great app starting to blow up, but these guys on Clubhouse gotta fucking chill with their bios. Like, I understand you're getting jobs, but yo, the multi-level marketing schemer, Ponzi scheme, just douchebag, like, if you have two pages of fucking, bio, you are a fucking loser. I don't give a fuck if you, I just can't see, just, yo, man. Like, people are listing, oh, Coca-Cola this and this and this. Like, every, like, I don't even know if they're fucking official. People are just writing crazy shit on there. Anyways. Okay, so tomorrow is my boy Jock Peterson's last day as a full-time LA resident. Um, sad to see my boy go. Uh, what's crazy is, um, I ain't gonna get into that as personal shit. Uh, he's been to the snow only once in his life. So Chicago is a whole different world right now. Okay. But yo, good luck out there, Jocktober. I'll be seeing you in the Windy City, in the 312. But I'll actually be seeing you later tonight because I got some gifts for you. And I uh, appreciate all the blessings and everything. And and I don't really wish well if people I'll leave them on the fucking Dodgers, but me and you became close friends. So, I, you know, it's uh, I, we're gonna get you on the show again. And we'll talk that shit. Um, okay, my Lakers. Fuck. We are playing some sketchy ass ball, y'all. We are playing catch up bullshit ball. Right? When the obvious guys don't show up, finally that's when Kuzma decides to play some ball, right? I just don't know. I'm so like, ugh. and again, I'm just jumping into this. I kind of watched it from afar, had it on. I'm watching the games, of course, but like, you know, I had to focus on the football shit. All I know is that we keep playing catch-up ball and you know we're getting the w most of the time right but last night yo we stunk all right we let motherfuckers score 73 points in the first half like fuck is going on and then ad got hurt right and i'm praying that his achilles isn't that bad he's getting an mri today we need ad for the playoffs period no we need ad to win the chip there's no way we win without him period there's no way we win without him okay um, that crazy ass dunk at the buzzer by LeBron, uh, it, it looked cool, right? But I was traveling, motherfucker. All right, no, I'm not hating. I'm just saying, look, he got away with it. That shit was motherfucking traveling. All right, just anyways. But by Lakers, man, it's a weird situation. And um, fuck, man, the AD thing. I just, I'm kind of at a loss of words. I just, you know, I was really confident talking a lot of shit last night on Clubhouse, and now I'm like, fuck. I'm sorry, two nights ago. We're on Clubhouse. Uh, by the way, the Dust Brothers went 6-1 with their NBA picks this weekend, so make sure you hit them up for the bet picks. They have the handicap game locked the fuck down. They, Miles and Jordan got this betting game on Smash. Please believe. Their Venmo is at DB Podcasts, plural, and you can follow them at DB Podcasts. On Instagram, you could DM there, whatever. Hit them up. They are fucking crushing that motherfucking shit. Ever since they started, they are killing it. Now, last topic of the show because I did get into a lot of shit this weekend off fucking the podcast. Sorry, won't happen again, right? This whole mess with the Air Jordan Trophy Room ones. Okay, look, one, I get it. The Twitter sneaker community hates Marcus Jordan, and everyone took an L. Um, he's Michael Jordan's son. They hate him, whatever. Okay, great. Okay. But everyone except his homies, I guess celebrities and influencers, uh, took an L. Those guys got their pairs, whatever. Benjamin Kicks is my homie, but he posts the most disrespectful douchebaggery. I mean, if I was his age, fuck it, I did the same thing. But he posted pretty much, fuck, millions of dollars with the fucking kicks, you know. So I don't even know the backstory. Uh, it's confusing from reading it on, on Twitter. And then it's not going to pay that much attention to it. It's not that deep. I'm just wanting to kind of address it because people are really fucking mad about, you know, my little screenshot. Okay, I've only heard rumors, right? And we don't talk about rumors on BTB, right? I try to keep shit to the facts. This ain't I Am Rappaport show. Not saying that he says wow. I'm just saying we do fact check. I like receipts, okay? And Marcus is my dude. 
So he could run his business how the fuck he pleases, okay? But yes, some of the things sound questionable. It Was it him behind, you know what I'm saying? You know, running the quarterback? I don't know. I don't think so. But again, it's none of my business, okay? But I did not backdoor shit. You know how stupid I word backdoor? I paid retail off the actual store's website, okay? And please always remember this, all right? Life is not fair okay remember that those who know how to win will always win those who don't or just like to make excuses and complain you will be bulldozered by life okay and that's it um speaking of bulldozers an african-american lady i forget what city she was in just barely read this story but she's working um at a pizza place to make ends meet like literally working to take care of her kids and she had no money or family to watch her kids so she had to leave them in a motel room and like you know they're playing with themselves and like once in a while a friend would I guess check on them well even though that's not how I would handle my kids I'm not going to knock any woman who is destitute and you know just any human being doing the most doing everything that they possibly can to try to feed and support their kids. Like, man. And that's all she got in the world. And she was arrested for endangering her kids' lives. And even though I understand the law, fuck that. We got to do better. You know, I hear that story and that shit broke my motherfucking heart. Even in her mugshot, she's crying. You can tell she wasn't out just trying to fuck around. She was literally working. Okay. If anyone hears anything more about this story, and knows how I can send that lady some money, please message us any way possible. DM, email, whatever. Really appreciate it. I, you know, like I said, we're all we got. I got to help this lady out. Um, but yo, guys, that is it for the weekend wrap up. Sorry, I know you guys thought I was gonna fucking address this Meek Mill situation with six nine. It's just fucking not. It's just a losing situation story for everyone. It's just no whack is you know like I'm not gonna. But yeah, that's not gonna be spoken about this on this show. Um, we do have a very special guest coming on the podcast this Thursday. We got another 12, y'all, coming on. My dude, Michael Dixon of my beloved Seahawks. He is the punter and placeholder for the Hawks. And I truly believe that he doesn't get enough shine. Most people on special teams don't. But, yo, it's time for me to lend him my platform. This motherfucker did an A. He got a real legit A grade. For being a punter for the Seahawks. This motherfucker really is just really needs to get his his propers. Meaning he needs to get his flowers, right? Uh oh yeah. I sold my Range Rover guys. Thank you, Ali, from Car Breakers in Orange County. Uh it's actually his dude, is one of the dudes who has supported uh the podcast. He's yes, he's part of the BTB army. He had purchased it. By the way, I didn't really get back to anyone aggressively about the car. My assistant me, ran to some emails, but really people were just kind of bullshitting here and there. And people don't realize that this was really a fucking great deal. But I'm so glad it worked out this way because Ali lives not far and it just all worked out. And I want to help his business out. And we talked about this when uh he was somebody that bought a BBDTC LA box and dude was just a solid dude. So again, the Range Rover is gone. Thank you always. But yo, we gotta go. So I need you guys to do some homework, and I know you guys hate homework, but yo, I give gifts out, and I do a bunch of stuff. You see, gave away 10 bear bricks, 10 1,000% bear bricks worth over 20 grand. Gave 10 away last night to some dude in Indiana. Look at, I'm asking you guys to do me a small favor. Please tell three people about BTB and let them know this is the best free game podcast on the fucking planet. All right, guys, I love you guys. Lakey Lake, what is happening, sir? Are you good? Yes, this is not your practice life. I already know. Please, sir, Lakey, take us to the crib, bro.